1980 began with a January broadcast of Still We Remember, narrated by Reuben Silver. The special looked at an exhibit of slave art that displayed at Cleveland's Museum of Art before moving to the Smithsonian. In April, Ed Asner narrated the Emmy-winning Tomorrow came much later. WBIZ cameras accompanied the pilgrimage of 19 Cleveland Heights High School students and Holocaust survivor Bertha Lautman to World War II concentration camps. Barrack 27 was Bertha's home for two and a half years. This is Bertha's room. Left through the door, the second bunk on the right, in the middle. It was death, nothing else. The award-winning Home Again, hosted by Jim LaRue, chronicled the rehab of a house on Bessemer Road in March of 1981. Thirteen weeks of total renovation, and this old house was home again. Another Emmy award-winning series began in October of 81. The Dobama Kids Playwriting Festival staged an hour-long compilation of productions from the annual Marilyn Bianchi Kids Playwriting Festival, which was held at the Dobama Theater. Signature, a unique platform for idea people, poets, pundits, curmudgeons, and lovers, each in his own way, in his own time, to his own drum. Bridged by Mariana Nowinski. In February of 1982, Cleveland State University professor and foremost proponent of physics, Dr. Gerald Walker, floated kinetic carnival into the classrooms nationwide, garnering an Emmy along the way. Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Ah. It's no problem. On a less perilous level, Shirley Adams hosted The Needle and I, a 13-week sewing series for junior high students. Now in its eighth season, North Coast Report is a reporter's roundtable, anchored by Hugh Daniso with facts and opinions from area print journalists. Zelma George and the William Appling Singers collaborated in February 1983 on A Joyful Noise. Selected readings and spirituals demonstrated the historical and cultural meanings behind the American Negro spiritual. In the spring of 1982, WBIZ traveled to Baldwin-Wallace to record the college's 50th annual Bach Festival. The classic Bach piece, St. Matthew Passion, was simulcast in April of 83 with WCLV, and was broadcast throughout the country on PBS stations. A half-hour documentary, The Falcon Cup, was telecast in September 1983. It covered the 46th annual Falcon Cup sailboat race from the Cleveland Yacht Club to Metters Harbor Yacht Club. The Emmy-winning My First Hundred Years was presented in October. Naomi File role-played this poignant, dramatic, hour-long special on aging. My First Hundred Years won many awards, including the Corporation for Public Broadcasting's Best Program of the Year. Taped at the Cleveland Museum of Art, Reflections of Reality in Japanese Art was the last major exhibition under the direction of Sherman Lee before his retirement. Dr. Lee narrated the documentary. Christmas Eve of 1983 found many viewers warming themselves in front of their television sets as Fireside crackled and popped and roared away with festive musical accompaniment. Fireside will still be ablaze for the Christmas joys of the 90s. The orchestra was presented to young people as just one big musical instrument in the November 1984 production of A Musical Encounter in Cleveland. The multi-award winning program featured the Cleveland Institute of Music's Youth Orchestra and members of the Cleveland Orchestra. In April of 1985, an hour-long special looked at Cleveland's desegregation program five years after it began. Desegregation, making the grade, the questions were as tough as the answers. Another school day begins in Cleveland. Chris Columbia and Leon Bibb got together in November 1985 to host 100 Years of Jazz. The production combined classic recordings and archival photos with in-studio jazz band performances. Margaret Burke White, The Right Place at the Right Time, was broadcast in December. 
The Emmy-winning program traced the life of Margaret Burt White, one of America's best-known photographers who began her legendary career in Cleveland. Another Emmy-winning program which first aired in June of 86 was the Medicine Heart Transplant Special, Out of Tragedy Comes Triumph. The program broke new broadcasting ground as a heart patient was followed from diagnosis through the transplant procedure and recovery to a six-month post-operative follow-up report. The program also won an Ohio Educational Broadcasters Award. Rick had a remarkable recovery. He spent five days in intensive care and went home in just 14 days. We visited with him 31 days after surgery. Really, I had to walk slow. Where now I can jump up and walk three miles and at a fast pace, and it really doesn't bother me that much. In January of 1987, WVIZ debuted the Emmy-winning Dimension, a monthly hour-long measure of Northeast Ohio's people, pursuits, prides, pleasures, and now and then, peccadillos. Host Lawrence Elder probed some of the most important issues surrounding the child care industry in the March 1987 broadcast of Fabric. The monthly program covers the major social issues in our community and provides a variety of opposing viewpoints. You'll never believe what goes on at the zoo in the winter, exclaimed Bob Fuller as he took us underground at the Cleveland Zoo. And he was right. WBIZ cameras captured the compelling Canadian singer, songwriter, and performer Anne Mortify in concert from the Hannah Theater in February of 1988. For 13 weeks, we ate smart with Cook Smart, as Chef Susie Heller selected and prepared special foods of Northeast Ohio. Channel 25's Kinder Kicks began in September. Energized by Linda Lazinski, the series of short segments was designed to get kids up and exercising between programs. In January of 89, Kathy Bruguette hosted the first of a monthly series called Our Vacation, which gives viewers a look at exotic vacations through the views and videos of Ohioans who've seen it for themselves. Four of Northeast Ohio's innovative educational programs were highlighted in the March telecast of Learning, Local Innovations. The four success stories demonstrated the commitment to excellence of certain area educators. Three segments first featured on Dimension were combined to form the April special, Cuyahoga Valley Trilogy, the program, hosted by Reuben Silver, looked at three very signal features of the Cuyahoga Valley Recreation Area, its history, the Ohio Canal, and the Recreation Area Steam-Powered Railroad. Jackie Bishop hosted Race to the Moon, Cleveland's contribution, which was broadcast in July. It marked the 20th anniversary of the United States lunar landing. The half-hour documentary looked at the contributing efforts made by the NASA Lewis Research Center right here in Cleveland. And just recently finished was the 13-part series, Maury's Market, which debuted in September. Host Maury Farron tours Cleveland's ethnic area markets where specialty foods can be purchased. And he gives us a glimpse of traditional ethnic preparation. 